visiting in-store or view other options on the screen for more ways to purchase your book. Make sure to grab a book review guide at the Connect Center. Turn it in to be entered into the quarterly $500 giveaway. Leaders are readers. Start a book club with your friends and family today. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At Choose Life Ministries, we prioritize hearing the Word of God daily, and each month we select a specific message just for you. The message of the month helps make hearing the Word easy. As you discipline yourself to listen to this message throughout the month, your faith will grow. You can listen to this month's Message of the Month on our YouTube channel or on the Choose Life Church app. Challenge yourself to hear the Word more this month than you did last. Here is a sneak peek at this month's Message of the Month. Why not? Why not believe God? Why not do what God's Word says? The victory has been won. Why don't you fight the good fight of faith and take a hold of the things that Jesus paid for you to have? If you're going to have to change your focus, why not change it to the place that will give you the greatest life? I'll tell you something is happening in Hobbs, New Mexico right now. I can see it right now. It's happening. There's a miracle happening in Hobbs. Well, I started sensing some things in my hotel room. God's dispatching more angels to this local church for the purpose of miracle power. And because he's found a place where his word is honored and glorified, he can bless me. And when he finds a place that will allow him that, he's pleased to dispatch heavenly artillery. Father, we thank you for this house of miracles, this house of healing, this house where people's minds are set free and set right, where lives are put back on course. And I thank you, Father, for multiplied miracles. We thank you for divine increase, divine multiplication, and that people will come. They won't just come from this direct vicinity, but from regions far off. They'll drive for hours to get here because they are in life and death situations. And in those life and death situations, word will reach their their ears about what God is doing in this place and what they can receive here. And they will come. I'm seeing something in my spirit. In 2024, I'm going to come here to Hobbs and there's a stadium. I don't know what you have here, but we're going to do a one day stadium event here in Hobbs. I see it. I saw it unfold. I'm standing here and it's shaking me. The devil's not going to have this city. God's going to shake this city. Every time I see this property I see faith. Faith in God. And our faith is to be tangible for others to recognize. Father, I say it by the Spirit. This is not something I'm choosing to say. It's something you are directing to be said. A 30% increase upon this place. A 30% increase in every flow, in every manifestation. A 30% increase in revelation, in manifestation manifestations in provision. Father, we thank you for the dynamic increase. And certainly that's not the end of it, but it is the next step of it. I'm just going to speak out of my spirit. The same way God turned over land and property and made building easy for me, the Lord's going to reward this church with you. In the time to come, as this church continues to grow and multiply, your next move, property and building wise, will be the easiest move you ever made. It'll be like picking out a sweater at the store. You'll get the money and the property of the building without spending any of the money in Jesus. There will be a tsunami of prosperity coming into your house. And I see those big, huge waves coming in, coming into all of you, all of your businesses, all of you personally. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hallelujah. Come on, say the Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Say it again, the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. You know, when we were little, we used to sing a song in church, and it said, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. I think about when you turn on the light, and, and not in your house, or any, you know, and then the cockroaches start scrambling, right? Not in anybody's house here, but you understand the point. When we magnify God, 
Guys, we're setting an atmosphere for the week. We're setting an atmosphere for this community, not just for our lives, but for everything around us. When we exalt him, the Bible says that he draws all men to himself. Let God arise in your life. And the, like the enemy cannot stand the name of Jesus. The enemy cannot stand when you know the blood. The enemy cannot stand at the word. Every time he came to Jesus, when Jesus turned at him, with every temptation, None of this, it's so hard. None of this, we're just struggling. No, he's already given us the victory. With God, all things are possible. When he came up on Jesus, he said, it is written. And when he came again, he said, it is written. And when he came again, he said, it is written. One scripture, one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. There's more than two of us in here. There's more watching online. So we're doing damage to the kingdom of you're taking your place in victory, in prosperity, in healing, in purpose, in this hour. Say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Not only no, but you have no place. No place. The enemy has been defeated. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice with a shout of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
belong to the light when the night is at its darkest. Just hold on for the dawn will soon arrive. When you feel the winds are changing, there's a new day. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord today? Are you grateful to be a child of the Most High God? Hallelujah. It is good. It is so good to bless his holy name. We can give him the fruit of our lips. We can magnify him and just declare his goodness in our life. Declare his power in his life. Be thankful for his mercy, that he's a patient God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's great to see you in church today. If you are here with us for the first time, welcome to Choose Life Church. Let's give our first time guests a great big round of applause. We're so honored that you're here with us. We would love the opportunity to connect with you. We have two connect centers out in the lobby. We'd love for you. Just stop by. Mention that it's your first time. We'd love to connect with you and give you a gift. And then also those of you with us online, thank you for being with us as well. Let's give them a great big round of applause. We know you're tuned in. We're glad you tuned in. We know you're going to be strengthened and encouraged today because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing yes. by the Word of God. As you take your seats, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm here to grow. 
I'm going to grow. God is so faithful, and his plan for our life is always increase. It's always more. It's always growth. And so at the beginning of every new month, we give you new opportunities to grow. Just like Pastor Dean or Pastor Greg said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So being in church is a great way to grow. But there's so many other tools that are available to you. So if you did not, when you came in today, get this brochure, New Month, New You. Will you raise your hand? The sanctuary hosts in your section will be more than happy to come around and make sure that you get one of these. Do sanctuary hosts have these? Okay, so if somebody could just grab these and make sure if your hand is in the air. What did you guys do first service? Nice job, Johnny. This should be the second service. That was the I'm good so thing about thankful three for services. our volunteers. I really am. People who serve in church are better than people who don't. Amen. Here we go. Anybody, go anybody say that. else? We still got some hands over here. I just want to say that. Just serve in church. Amen. Amen. All right. So, guys, once you have this incredible Mr. Flyer, Mac in the back. You are going to have all the deets, otherwise known as details, <laughs> for what is new for you to grow this month. And we want you to grow. Say it again. I'm here to grow. I'm going to grow. So we have a message of the month that we picked out that we feature on our Choose Life app. We have a new daily devotion that Pastor Dean wrote, a new devotion for our kids, for our youth as well. And then we have a new book of the month that we've selected for our kids, for our youth, and for our teens as well. And there's actually a a volunteer at our wagon in the lobby that will be more than happy to uh, spell this out for you even in more detail. Uh, If you're not a reader and you would like somebody to kind of explain it to you even further, guys, We want you to keep increasing in your family, personally, in your finances. And that is all tied to your relationship with the Word of God. Because the Bible says in Joshua 1, 8, that when we meditate on the Word of God, we make our own way prosperous and successful. So we actually have five um, of this month's books of the month that the interns are going to hand out. This is the Holy Spirit, the helper we all need by Fred Price. So if you would like one, wave your hand wildly. Otherwise, they are available for personal purchase in the filling station bookstore. We also have a t-shirt that we want to give away today. Um, This is one of um, from our Bible school. Discipleship eliminates every problem and that is a 2x. Let me show you really fast. This is our um, youth book of the month. Does your tongue need a healing by Derek Prince? That's for teenagers this month. It is a great book. If you're with us online, hey, hook up with us. Even though you're a part of our extended family, all of these books are available at Amazon on or probably um, local Christian bookstores near you. The Berenstein Bears Easter Story is our kids book of the month. Look at all these kids volunteers. Y'all are awesome. So grab those books. Listen, make an investment in your family because again, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm here to grow. We want you to grow and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Dr. Fred Price is already in the grandstands. Hallelujah. But all of the, and and y'all, when y'all text us, when y'all ask us, what do you think about so and so, what do you think about so and so? Can I just tell you if they're not in the bookstore or if they don't come preach here, don't ask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like just feed on the voices that are here, right? Because if we if they're not in the bookstore and if they don't come here, we're probably not listening. So then we don't know. And then it puts us in an awkward position. Because when we have to look up their Twitter feed and their whatever and find out, like, is there still holiness in the camp? Is there holiness in the camp? Is there false doctrine in the camp? Listen, you do whatever you want to do, but we're going to promote the voices of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going we're gonna to promote voices who believe in the Holy Ghost, That's right. who do not make excuses for prosperity, divine right. healing, on and on and on. Hallelujah. So get those books of the month. And again, if you didn't get one of these flyers when you came in last call, anybody else need a flyer? This is going to give you all the details. We want you to be an official part of the church. We want you to know when all of our services are. We want you to know what's new this month. We have a lot of incredible things happening this month. That's Easter this month, y'all. Can you believe it's March already? Do y'all wish Easter it's was amazing. the same day like Christmas was? I 
do. It changes every year. Sometimes it's in March. Sometimes it's in April. For all the Christians, we need the, the planning. You wish it was the same. You know what I'm right. saying? But anyways, that's all right. March 31st, last Sunday of the month. This month is already Chris, not Christmas, Easter. Easter. I was thinking and about Christmas. not only that, but we finished out February so strong. Yeah. We added some new partners that finished Growth Track. Let's take a look at their pictures. Hey, all right. As well as, there we go. Welcome to the family. It's so exciting. A growth track is a great way to get plugged in here in your local church um, and discover gifts and abilities that God's put on the inside of you. We have so many people that, you know, we don't exactly have time to go through everything that is, but they're like, I didn't know what it was, but I signed up. I, you know, I went and I'm so glad that I did. And that can be yeah. your testimony too, because we're, we're having growth track week one, Facts. which is a great time to it get is. started. Yes, it's great. And it's going to be dismissed in just a few minutes. But before that, y'all, we already kicked off March in an incredible way. Our VIP volunteers, as well as our elders. LBI interns and LBI students did an incredible outreach yesterday. We want to give you the highlights. Take a look at the screen. That is so amazing. All those salvations, that person receiving their healing. Yes, even just hallelujah. Just a few clips of just people connecting with other people, praying for other people, having fun, preaching the gospel, the hallelujah. most important thing. Amen. And so it's just so exciting to be a part um, of this great community that we live in. We're so thankful yes. for all of not just the LBI students, but also the volunteers and everyone that was a part of that. I'm yeah. um, just being a blessing in our great community. We're so thankful hey, for that. Yeah. Also, we want to let you know tonight. Everybody say tonight. At 7 p.m., yeah. we have the Watoto Children's Choir. They're going to be performing. Hey, let's show them the video. Let's show them the video this service. Let's show so the they video. Know what to expect. Roll look it. The, look at the video. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be so amazing. So don't miss it and invite your family, invite your friends. I promise you, you will be so blessed. These children, these this ministry, they came all the way from Uganda. So the last time they were here was in 2020. And so we're so excited to host them every time um, they do a tour. So do not miss it. Be here and bring people with you. You will, you will not regret. It will be one of the best nights of the entire year for you. I guarantee you. You will be so blessed. You will be so encouraged. So don't miss Watoto tonight. 7 o'clock. Uh, 7 o'clock. The doors will open at 6. Get here early. They've got all kinds of fun things to show you in the lobby. They'll want to meet you after. So make sure sure that you're here again 7 p.m. tonight with Toto Children's Choir. Do not miss it and bring some people with you. All right. We are so grateful for church. Church accomplishes so many incredible things in our life. It gives us the opportunity to grow. It is, gives us the opportunity to be encouraged, to sow seed, to make investment, to worship, um, to really establish ourselves in the faith. And like Pastor Greg already said, that's what Growth Track is all about. We want you to be an official part of our church. We don't want you to just attend. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with that, but Psalms 92 
22.13 says that those that are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. And so right now we have a couple things that we want to happen. If you know for sure, hey, this is, this is my church. I really believe that this is where God has called me to be. And you want to be where he's called you to be. Not where there's opportunity necessarily. Not where there's trees. Not where there's beautiful mountains or whatever. You want to be where he has called you to be. That's the safest place for your life and your family. And that's where your prosperity is. Your prosperity is tied to the place that he has called you. And that is really tied to your local church. So if you know, hey, this is where I'm supposed to be planted. Pastor Zine and Kathy would be honored to be your pastors. We want to introduce ourselves to you. We want to show you what this church is all about, how we started and what your part looks like in the family. And so that happens through Growth Track. And so um, as we stand in just a moment, you can dismiss yourself to Growth Track through that single set of double doors straight ahead. Pastor Kathy is actually your host this service along with several of our Growth Track volunteers. And then also they're going to be at the front of the stage as we worship God. If you would like prayer, if you've got a need in your body, the Bible says believers lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We believe in the healing power of God. And so if there's something that's bugging you, don't sit there and let it bug the entire service. Don't depend on the report of man. Let God be who he wants to be in your life. Let him be your healer. If you need prayer of agreement, the Bible says when two on earth agree is touching anything, it will be done by our Father in heaven. So go ahead and stand. Three things are happening. You're either worshiping God with all of your heart, creating an atmosphere, literally cultivating the soil of your own heart to receive the word. You're getting out of your seat. You're coming down front because you have a need in your life or you're dismissing yourself. Hey, I'm going to be a part of Choose Life. That's where I'm called and I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to grow. I'm going to increase in this place. Father, we magnify you. We thank you for the benefit of your plan, the benefit of your presence, God, the benefit of your power. I thank you, Father, that you ascended, but as you ascended, you gave gifts unto men. God, we thank you for pastors. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for the flow of the anointing in this service that separates it even from the first service. God, our hearts are energized with expectation. We're not just here to hear, but we're here to be changed by the power of your word, by your anointing. I thank you for healing. I thank you for connections, divine connections, people taking their place in their church and taking their place in your presence, God. You alone deserve all the glory and all the honor. Come on, just lift up your hands, lift up your hearts. God, be magnified in this place. Let every thought, let every stronghold, let every addiction, let every frustration, let every fear be brought low under the power of your name, under the power of your presence, God.
will prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against us will be proven wrong. You've prospered everything that we've set our hands to. You've given us the mind of Christ. You've cleansed us and washed us with the power of your blood. You've set your oil of anointing and gladness upon our head. We run and we do not grow weary. We walk and we do not faint. We abide under the shadow.
your mercies are new every single morning. Thank you, Father, for fresh fire, fresh oil in this place right now. For a new week, for a new month. It's in you that we live and move and have our being. We thank you for the victory that is ours. We rejoice and we praise and we celebrate the God of our salvation in this place. We bless you, Lord.
So you mean to tell me that you believe that? Come on now. How are you going to believe something like that? Huh? Love came down. Wow. The Savior was sent. How are you going to believe that? How are you going to believe that? What have you got to go on? Huh? The Word. That's all we have. And that's all we need. Not only to receive the sacrifice, to see that rescue is real, but then follow up on everything else that belongs to us. Because that's what the Word says. That's what the Word says. It's not pie in the sky. It's what the Word says. It's not for the sweet by and by. It's for the nasty now. Because the Word says so. So I got a bunch of believers in here. Is that what you're saying? Huh? Now I'm talking about believing believers. I'm not talking about unbelieving believers. I'm talking about believing believers. Because the only way that you can ever be a receiver is is by being a believing believer. Because you know, the Bible is going to be challenged by people who don't walk by faith. Even religious people. Sometimes they're the worst. They say one thing, but they don't believe. But I want us to believe everything he told us was available for us. Because I want your lives to be supernatural. I want you to be whole in your bodies. I want you to have peace in your heart. I want you to have more than enough to do for you and to do for others and to be a blessing. But the only way you can do that is be a believer. You can't be a quitter. You have to continue. When you've done really all you know to do, you just keep doing what you know to do. And you can't get weary. You can't get weary in doing well or well-doing. You just keep going. Because you know what? If you plant it, you're going to have a harvest. I said, you're going to have a harvest. Hallelujah. You're going to have a harvest. Has anybody had just a little bit of harvest yet? How weak that was. Was that so weak right there? His coming down and paying the price was worth a simple shrieking that would pull the paint off the walls. Because everything miraculous and every promise that we have is because He came down for us. He paid for everything up front. We got a lot to be excited about. We got more to learn. And we got more to do. Amen? Yeah. Greet a couple of people around you and have a seat if you would. God, great to see you. 
excited about Watoto being here, excited about them being here tonight. Be, sh- be sure and come. You will, uh, it's, uh, it's an over-the-top treat. They're a, it's a blessed organization, and uh, they're doing a, doing a great work uh, in Uganda and other parts of Africa also, actually. So anyway, it'll be worth, uh, worth your time. The kids will enjoy it immensely. And um, we'll see what it looks like when uh, uh, boys and girls are rescued and then watched over and helped, uh, helped to grow. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, grab your Bibles, if you would, if you got one with you there, and go to Psalms, uh, Psalms 92. So on April Fool's Day, I will have been here 46 years, 46 years, April Fool's Day of 1978, uh, I moved up here, and uh, Kathy came up, and we got married on August the 26th of that year, and uh, we just... uh, I mean, I don't even know how a guy could say this. We just, we just really love Hobbs. Can you imagine how crazy that is? <laughs> and the only thing we can figure out is that, uh, that it's the people. That's right. And uh, being where you're supposed to be. Right. And it's, uh, it's truly been uh, a life changer for us and everything that, uh, really everything that we ever thought would be possible. And I said that because uh, you need to realize that uh, this space of time that uh, that we're going to live is the shortest space of time we're going to spend anywhere. Because everything from now on, either the return of the Lord Jesus or our last breath, is going to put us in His presence forever. And so you've only got, you've only got one opportunity in this life to uh, hear the truth, uh, believe the truth, and, and then begin to do the truth. And really what that's designed to do is to... Uh, not just equip you to be an overcomer in this life, but for you to see what God's original plan was. His, his original plan, there was going to be no suffering. There was not going to be any messes whatsoever. Huh? Adam and Eve were just going to do what they were told to do. They were going to do what God told them to do. They were going to replenish the earth. They were going to, they were going to fill the earth. The two of them were going to make it happen. I know people often wonder, well, where do the next women come from? Listen, I don't have any idea how that works, but I don't care. We've already said that we believed in this Jesus coming down. There are other things that are far too copious for the dimensions of our comprehension. So what do we do? We just push that over to the side we find what exactly he wants us to do, what he has for us, and that's what we focus on. We focus on our lives bringing glory to him. Huh? I, I can't imagine trying to, trying to embrace all of the things that are supernatural in the word and then explain them to people. Most people don't need that. Most people just need some relief from their lives. And that was his plan. So I know what it looks like. We've all had areas in our lives that are jacked up. Some more perverse than others. Some more destructive than others. But let me just be sure you understand that lost is lost. Every one of us is in need of a Savior. 
And that's why he came and did what he wanted to do. So that we could be delivered from death. Both spiritual and natural. And he did a perfect job. So you and I are here really with just one purpose. And that's to bring glory to him. Honor to him. And we don't do this like it was a, a worldly endeavor. We do this like he directed us to do it. By faith. All we need to know is what he wants from us. What he wants to do through us. And then that's what we do. Because the Bible says his commands, his directions, they're not hard. They're not grievous. But they're easy. It's what Jesus said when he was calling people to himself. He said, come unto me, all you that labor. You got all kinds of mess going on between your ears. You're laboring. You're involved in religion. You're, you're doing a lot of things but accomplishing nothing. He said, come to me. My assignment is easy. And my burden, the things and assignments I give you are not heavy. Not to mention the fact everything he gives us, the word says that the Father labors with us to bring them to pass. Let me be honest with us. We don't bring anything to the equation. All we bring is our lives. We have no assets. All he was after was our heart and then our devotion to his plan. What happens when we work that plan? You have a miraculous life ahead of you. One day at a time. One day at a time. But nobody can, nobody can make that happen but you. The price is paid. The Father and the Lord Jesus, they're just honestly, they're just chilling. Because they've done everything they're going to do. They've done everything. They're not doing anymore. They don't have any more to do. Huh? He's been to the cross. He's raised. Nothing more to do for them. The word's out. Believing on the Lord Jesus brings salvation to an individual. That's been paid for. For a little bit, a little bit over 2,000 years. So they're done. They're done with their work. They're not up there talking about you or talking about me. They're not up there complaining. They're not upset. They're in a good place. Hallelujah. Yeah, they're in a good place. And they, they want us to be in that place with them. We are spiritually. But they want us in that place experientially. They want us to enjoy the life that Jesus paid for. You know, the word uses, uh, occasionally uses the word suffer, and it uses the word sacrifice. What are we going to sacrifice? What you, got, what you got that would get his attention? What you, what you got would, would make him feel better or what he, about what he did? Now, he did all of that the same way he expects us to do what we do. He did it by faith. All he's looking for is our devotion, our love, our desire to do what he tells us to do. And you don't have to be a serial killer to realize that you've been rescued. Everyone that comes to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's what this kingdom is all about. It's about you and I letting his covenant become our constitution. His covenant to replace what natural man sees as necessary. No, no, we've got a covenant with the Creator.
the Constitution, nothing man has fabricated can do anything like God's Word can do. And you just begin and you don't ever quit. The more you learn, the more you do. And the more you do, the more you want to do. And you actually want to. You want to. It'll get all over you. You'll want to do more. Amen. Really, you'll, be, you'll begin to tell that things are going to get better when you begin to consider you less and him more. I always like that song, Turn Your Eyes on Jesus. You know, you don't understand those things very much when you're a kid in a denominational church that we didn't attend much anyway. But, you know, you remember things like that after you get connected with God through the Lord Jesus. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth begin to look strangely dim in the light of His glory and His grace. And I'm not talking about feelings right now. I'm talking about reality. I'm talking about getting to a place where your relationship with Him begins to fuel everything you do. The more you focus on his goodness and his plan, the less important the things of this world become. Now, that doesn't mean you, that doesn't mean you don't go to work. It doesn't mean that you don't do what you're called to do. It means you do it all in light of your relationship with him. Because as I've said many, many, many times, when you're focused on Him, everything you do and everything you are becomes better. You'll be a better, you'll be a better whatever you are, or you'll quit it and do something that you're better at. You know what do we do if we don't have Him? We just, I mean, what I mean, what would we do? What? What would actually keep us going? Uh, our planning for a, a vacation in three or four months? Uh, it's going to be a week, and you're actually gone two weeks before the vacation, and, and when you get back, you're still two weeks before they can count on you to do anything at work. <laughs> huh? And then what are you going to do? You got, you've already blown 55 weeks right there. Two, week, two weeks in an anticipation. One week in on the vacation and two weeks in remorse. (laughs) Because the vacations are doesn't sound like very profitable, does it? But we can have a relationship with the Lord seven days a week. Will not interfere with the vacation, it will enhance the vacation. Because as you as you follow him correctly. As you become devoted to him, you'll start having longer vacations. Even though you'll be ready to get back before the vacation's over. You won't hate your job. You won't hate your business. You won't hate the people you're around. You'll be rescued in more ways than just eternally. But the thing about it is, you'll never experience that till you do your part. Till you do your part. You know, that's one of the reasons that the Bible says uh, to know to do and don't is sin. It separates you. You're separated from the plan of God 
when you're not a doer of the Word. And being a doer of the Word is what maintains uh, the freedom and the power and the pleasure that you have when you're doing it His way. You know, it's amazing to me that they, they actually use the foolishness of preaching. You know, just talking about the Word of God. Because much of it, from a natural perspective, is foolish. We already talked about it early on. Jesus came down to die for us. To go to hell for us. To die spiritually for us. And then was resurrected. So that he could become our substitute for all those things. The foolishness of preaching. But something happens when you hear the word. And many of you that are here uh, pretty much all the time. The more you hear this truth, the more it becomes a part of you. And because the Word is uh, far more than natural, it's spiritual, then when you hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it, it begins to get a hold of you. It'll get a hold of you before you ever get a hold of it. But once you, once you begin to let it be on purpose that you hear, then it begins to change your actions. And that's when things really begin to roll. But I just want to say today, don't ever quit hearing the Word of God. Yes, amen. Don't, don't ever let the value of God's Word diminish. Don't let anything happen to you or close to you that would ever keep you from focusing on the Word of God. Because it's, it's how we were rescued. We are rescued with the Word. The Word was a lifeline that was thrown to us. And it put us in a position for supernatural victory, supernatural peace. I know we hear quite a few of the same things here, but it's good that you know that uh, what you're involved in is real. And... uh, I'm excited to say that uh, having uh, been personally involved in it the way I should have been for those 46 years, uh, I wouldn't take for any of it. There's nothing like, nothing like honoring God. Yeah. Nothing like it whatsoever. Absolutely nothing like it. Right. Challenges come, challenges go. Most of them that you perpetrated on yourself. But it just gets better and better and better. More and more peace comes into your life. You you begin to, as I mentioned earlier, take your eyes off of you. And begin to look at him. And when you look at him, uh, through his word then it makes you realize that he didn't have his eyes on himself either. He had his eyes on the people, the prize, the joy that was set before him. That's what he had his eyes on. That's that's how he was able to finish his assignment with joy and be restored to the side of the Father. For us, when we do that, 
It means a life really, and I said it again for a service, I've said it a lot, uh, a life of peace, a life of knowing that you don't have to fear anything, nothing. Absolutely nothing. You have to fear nothing. What would there be to fear? If you're a child of God, one of the, one of the things that Jesus paid for was uh, that you or people, whoever, be delivered from the fear of death. Be delivered from the fear of death. Most people fear death. Most Christian people actually fear death. The only way that can happen is when you're not aware of your covenant. Yeah, that's right. that's good. You're not aware of your covenant. You're not aware of his supernatural power to take care of you in all situations. So, we're going to continue to do what we've been doing in this place for almost 46 years. And uh, 36, excuse me. And, uh, and we're going to expect to do better than ever. You know, I, I started semi-late when I started. But every day I'm starting, starting again, so... You know, I'm old enough now, I I had to know a little bit. I know one thing, I've enjoyed it a lot. I've come to realize how powerful God's Word is, how He will do what He said He'd do. And when I found out that Him being able to do what He said He'd do is predicated on me doing what I'm supposed to do, then those good things begin to happen more frequently. You know, that's why we're so adamant about the Word, being doers of the Word. James, the half-brother of Jesus, he made it clear. He made it clear to the people. Let me get it here for you so you can underline it or do something special with it. James 1, verse 22. He said, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. What happens if that's the case? You're deceiving your own self. You know, that's the way I was. That's the way many people that were, you know, raised in, uh, in certain settings is uh, you hear a few things but that's all you do. And just hearing the things of God will not help you. As a matter of fact, it'll put you in a position where things can happen and you don't know why they happened. But you know, the Word of God gives you great protection if you handle it correctly. The Word helps us defend ourselves. So he said, but be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only, Deceiving your own selves. He went on to say, for, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man that uh, uh, looks at himself in a mirror and he sees himself and then walks away and forgets what manner of man he was. Well, that's what most people do with the Word of God. They hear it, and they walk away from it. And consequently, it does them no good whatsoever. As a matter of fact, it becomes a a confusing life. When you've heard it, and you know how things are supposed to be, 
but you never take it to heart. Then verse 25, he says, but whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, that's what this is. Perfect law, this is a perfect law of liberty. Perfect freedom is in this book. Perfect freedom. Freedom that can't be stopped in any way. The perfect law of liberty and continues therein. You know, that's what we decided to do. We decided we're going to continue in this. And there were times that, uh, you know, we thought, what in the world? But we'd already made a decision. We're going to continue. Because you see, this is what the enemy wants. He wants the word. He wants to steal it from people like you and I. Because he knows if he can discourage you, you can buy into a lie or you don't do this word, you won't walk in freedom. You won't walk in liberty. This is what he comes to steal. He comes to steal the word. Because you can't do anything without the word. But with the word, you can do everything. You can do everything you need to do. Hallelujah. And he can't do a thing about it. Nothing. The enemy has no power over us in any way unless we stop using the Word. Nothing can he do. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Blessed. Blessed. Equipped to prosper, equipped to succeed, equipped to do well. Someone who knows that everything they put their hand to will prosper. All of these promises that belong to us, that are afforded us because we believe and do the word. Hallelujah. Huh? We believe and we do the word. If you're not a doer, You're deceiving yourself. No matter what it asks you to do. Forgive. You get nowhere with God if you harbor unforgiveness. Nowhere. I don't care if it's your exes in Texas. If it's something heinous that happened to one of your family members, it doesn't make any difference what it is. You got to be a person of forgiveness. I'm so I'm so excited that uh, I had a very short span of memory when it came to things that were done to me. And it was probably because I did so many things to others. Probably decided, you know, I need to be forgiven a bunch. I need to be forgiven a bunch. So you know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold this against him. And really that's where most people get hung up in their enjoying the things of God is because of unforgiveness. The Bible very clearly says, if we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven. Why is that? Well, it all comes back to him coming down. It all comes back to him coming down. We can't want what he has to offer and not do what he tells us to do. It's really as simple as that. And as we do that, 
we get hooked. We've had a lot of people hooked here over the years. You know, some people, some people, you know, after a period of time, they'll, they'll spit the hook out. You know, those of you that have fished any at all, you know, sometimes you got it, and it's all of a sudden, you know, you got nothing but a, a naked hook and an opportunity to say ugly stuff, you know? <laughs> But you can't, you can't do what other people do. You can't, you can't spit the hook. You got to stay hooked. You got to stay hooked. You got to stay vitally connected. And that's what he, isn't that what he said in John 15? Let's look at John 15 real quick. I'll try to get us here by the time the door's open for Toto. In John chapter 15, the Bible's really powerful. Yes. It really is. It's, ama it's an amazing book. That's I'm going to hope you don't mind me really loving what I do and who I do it for. Chapter 15 of John, uh, the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my, my father is the husbandman. He takes care of the vines. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. Ooh. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Well, you see that when you have a, a rose bush or some sort of a whatever. You know, you trim the nasty off of there. But, you know, when this is talking about this, uh, we, we are trimmed, pruned, and cleaned by the Word of God, not by a chainsaw or whatever. And he said here in verse 3 to the disciples, now you are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. The Word does it all. It fertilizes you. It cleans you up. It sets you up for certain victory in every area of your life. But, you know, just like you know, we talk about it a lot. Every promise has a condition. Yeah. Verse 4, abide in me. Yeah. And that means to stay vitally connected with him. Yeah. This is not a casual thing. Right. Or it's not supposed to be. Now, from a worldly perspective, in most religious settings, and even in most denominational settings, uh, these kind of things are casual. Now, there are people that are more focused on the Word than others, but generally speaking, that's not the case. People, it's just a, uh, it's just a casual thing. It's not a, it's not a serious thing. They don't seem to realize that the success of the Word of God is totally based on the sincerity of the man or woman of God. How do we see the Word of God? Is it, as it says, life to those that find it? Life to those that find it. Health and medicine to all their flesh. So there are all kinds of levels of belief, but there's only one level of belief that works, and that's sincere hunger and thirst, belief. Abide in me and I in you. 
as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself or by itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, he said. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him. Jesus was redundant, you know. He said a lot of things over and over again. I think it's because he was just trying to emphasize what it was really going to take. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, I always encourage people to meditate on that a little bit because, you know, you'll begin to think about all you do accomplish and this, that, and the other. But that means nothing to him. What you accomplish, what you accomplish that has nothing to do with him means nothing to him. Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. You know, there will be many people like that that don't abide in him. And they will be cast forth as a branch and as withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That's exactly what's going to happen at the end time. Those that are not attached to him will be separated and will spend eternity in hell. Not because that's what God wanted, but that's what transpires when you don't make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. If you abide in me, verse 7, and my words abide in you, just listen to this. If you abide in me, again, that's not casual. You're pretty excited about your relationship with him. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. That sounds like a blank check. Huh? You know what? That's what it's supposed to sound like. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Why do we think we can just say something when we're backed in the corner? Or we can just say something when we haven't ever paid much attention to what's going on. But now we got, we got some pressure on us now. And we think all of a sudden, you know, we're dealing with some cosmic Santa. But he's not. He's a God, a loving God. But a God that has given us parameters, standards things that we need to do in order for him to be able to legally free us from whatever's got us bound. He made this plan, and he's holding himself to it first and foremost. That's why when Jesus said, you must be born again, then there's not enough prayers or lit candles or whatever to save someone who hasn't personally received the Lord Jesus. Like it or not like it, that's just the way it is. You know, for people that aren't doing the Word of God, you can't be kind enough to them to help their feelings. He set this thing up for those who were serious about the relationship. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. What is that fruit? That's everything that's productive that lines up with the Word of God. You walking in health. You walking in prosperity. You walking in peace. You living in forgiveness. Honoring God's plan. Doing the things that the Word of God directs you to do.
That's the kind of fruit that Jesus died for you and I to have. I'm personally big on peace. You know that. I talk about it a lot. I think peace is amazing. I think it's so amazing to not be concerned about anything but right now. You know? I can't fix what happened 20 minutes ago. And uh, in 20 minutes from now, I'll deal with that. Whatever it is that needs to be dealt with. But we live in the now. As Hebrews 11 1 say, now. now. Faith is. Now. Now, you don't succeed in the future if you're not succeeding now. You got to be pushing forward in one way or to one degree or another in order to do better when you get to the next place. And that's what the Word's designed to do. To take you from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Things get better a year from now because you're doing better between now and a year from now. That's why you do better day by day. Amen. You don't check out because things are smooth. You don't, just, you don't not pay attention because you don't have anything to deal with. No, you continue to focus on the Word of God. You continue to put his word first place in your life. Hallelujah. I know a lot of people think all we have to do is just read the word. We just run around here and read the word. And, huh? and we go to the restroom and then we go back and read the word some more. And do it. I mean, that sounds good. I do. I spend a lot of, I spend a lot of time in the word, but I spend a lot of time in the word at home. I spend plenty of hours down here and then, uh, uh, I'm, when I go home, I don't, you know, I don't go home. Well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do of any value, you know? Right. I could tweet. <laughs> but that's gotten real, that's gotten real sophisticated. I remember when uh, I first had it back in 12. I mean, it was real simple. But now, gum, it's real elaborate. So I just have to tweet and run. When I first got on it, I was able to use it to uh, talk back. You tweet this to me, I'm going to tweet this to you. My tweet's going to be uglier than your tweet. Ain't that tweet? (laughs) I was using it for the wrong reason. But I stopped doing that. But I started up again. I started up again. I always like my tweets. So, you know, if I can't get somebody else to say something, I can check them out and say, I like that tweet. Because I don't claim any of the tweets as something that I came up with. I tweeted a real good one I liked uh, a couple of days ago. If you mess with the bride you're going to get fried. I actually sent that one to the enemy. I'm sure he read it. Yeah. Don't mess with the bride. Because if you mess with the bride, you're going to get fried. They're very, they're very serious about the bride. Jesus died to have the bride. Amen. Well, it's a pretty day today, isn't it? I mean, I haven't, it's, it's quite a while, but I mean, this is a nice, pretty weather. You guys look so good. Some of you are looking at me like, uh, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if... Uh, you know, something that I can say other than the Word of God that would, you know, move you. It's really all I've got anymore, you know. It's really all i got. It's the Word of God.
We got a lot going on here. Is there a lot going on out in the world? I don't, hmm? Craziness? There is craziness, you know. I mean, it's, it's bizarre. What's amazing is they're making fun of us. I'm thinking, look who's calling the kettle black, you know. I mean, <laughs> what is the matter with you people? Letting their kids determine what they are. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's crazy on any level. Huh? Now, listen, I'm counting on you. If some, some of your relatives start thinking crazy and that like that, please love them enough to say, what in the world are you thinking about? And when they start him hawing around, say, no, uh-uh. No, you, you got some major issues to think that that's something that we should even be having a conversation about. Is there any way I can help you? Huh? Because this is not going to be a good outcome. We've got the way We've got the truth, and we've got his life. We got it made. And he said it himself, so we know it's accurate. I really like that verse. Does anybody like that verse? I am the way. I know this sounds, it sounds so elementary, but it's so deep. It sounds elementary, but it's so deep. Maybe that's what takes me longer the time that I spend in the Word because I'm, I'm just trying to plumb some of those depths, you know? I am the way. Not a way, not an alternative route. I am the way. Huh? That makes him way important right there. And I am the truth. There is no truth outside the Lord Jesus. And I am the life. You know how excited I get about that one. He's your life and the length of your days. And all you need to do for him to be your life and the length of your days is to see yourself as being connected to him in that way. He's my life. He's my life. My wife's not my life. My kids aren't my life. My dog's not my life. My home's not my life. My clothes aren't my life. My vehicles aren't my life. My vacations aren't my life. You're not my life. He's my life. He's my life. And it's easy to see him like that. Honestly, what do you have to offer? What does PK have to offer? What do my daughters have to offer in light of what he has to offer? The best thing I can do for all of y'all is let you know that he's my life. Amen. He's my life. I was nothing. I would have become nothing unless I embraced him as my life. And I haven't even seen him. I've never even seen him. But he lives. 
within my heart. He walks with me. He talks with me. You know what he's even told me? That I'm his own. I know, Elliot, that's truth. That's exactly right. As a little child, you must be if you ever expect to be truly free. He lives. Wish I could sing, (laughs) but I'll save you that. Isn't that something? I can offer people freedom, success, peace, joy, longevity, anything and everything that that word affords us. I can boldly declare that belongs to you. That belongs to you. But the only way you can have it is the way he directs you to have it. You know, that that baby's fine, honestly. The baby's fine. It's the older people when they start doing that that, (laughs) you know, when the the adults start whining, that really bugs. (laughs) So, you can feel free to, you know, tell PK what I said because she knows it. The girls know it. The dog probably doesn't have a working understanding of that, but but she's a dog. She does know exactly when I'm supposed to feed her. Well, I want to give you an opportunity to sow real quickly. I mean, you don't have to sow quickly. I'm real quickly going to give you an opportunity. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of things happening. And a lot of things are going to continue to happen. Can I just tell you, we've got a lot of things going, but I don't have any details. I don't have any specifics. All I can tell you is God is going to use us. Which, which obviously includes you. He's going to use us. He's going to use this church uh, to make a, 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 an incredible difference in people's lives. I don't, I don't know, necessarily know what the scope or the reach will be. Uh, I believe it's already bigger than, uh, than I had any idea. So, obviously, I'm speaking in faith. But since the the Bible says that the just, those that have been justified, are supposed to live by faith, then that's really what we want me to do. That's what we want me to do. I have become, I don't know, exponentially more excited about the Word of God over the last four or five years that I felt like I almost had to repent for not being as serious as I I should be. But uh, the Spirit of God assured me that I've been serious. There's just another level. And uh, I believe He wants you to realize that also. First of all, for you personally. I want you to realize for you personally that God puts no cap. He puts no ceiling on what you can be and what you can accomplish. That's absolutely up to you. Just like you can't put a cap on God's plan for people or for the church. When we honor Him, we have an open door to whatever's needed and whatever's necessary. Because whatever He tells us to do, He'll equip us to do. 
and whatever you desire for your life personally that aligns itself with you continuing to be the man or woman of God that you are or the family that you are. He'll see to it. The Bible says that he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. He takes pleasure. He doesn't get upset when you get something. He takes pleasure in your prosperity. Hallelujah. He's not some cheap, barely get along thinker. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. I don't imagine he really enjoys hearing people talk down on his people prospering. Certainly when you're right with God, there's no limit on the blessings that you can have access to. I said, when you're right with him. When you're right with him. So what is our goal? Our goal is to be right with him. If you want to be successful at the house, you want to be successful in business or your employment, whatever it is, you've got to be right. You've got to be right. And the best way to be right is to make him the Lord of your life. And I'm not just talking about initially. I'm talking you make him the Lord of your life, your master, your owner, your possessor, your director, your protector, the Lord of your life, one that you know and he knows has now been chosen to be your all in all for all your days. How do you do that? Huh? You just do what I just said. You just... Say it and say it and say it. Yeah. Father, I, I, turn my, I turn my existence over to you. Yes. Yeah. Your wife or husband, they do that same thing. How does that look? You got to figure it out. Yeah. You got to figure out how it looks for you. There's no magic formula right. on these things working for you. You just have to be a doer. Start where you are. What are you thinking about? What's on your heart? That's not complicated, is it? Huh? You just go sit down somewhere, you know? It looks complicated when I said that. You <laughs> Just sit down somewhere and say, just close your eyes if you don't want to have them open. Huh? You know, just to kind of get in that shady place. Say, Father... I want your help. What do I need to focus on right now? Maybe you've got some things in your life. You know that they're, they're not good. Let him reveal it to you. God's not mad at you. He's not mad. He's not a hater. He's not going to tweet ugly stuff about you. Matter of fact, he's not going to tell anybody about his relationship with you. And he'll he'll just begin to drop things in your heart. He'll make it clear. He'll know who it's from. He's not not trying to hide anything from you. Can you imagine if God hid something from you? Do you think you could ever find it? No. I mean, you wouldn't want to play hide and seek with God. (laughs) Okay. Because he could disappear, you know, in an instant. And you could look for days. And then, you know, all of a sudden one day he'd come around the corner. Say, where you been? Well, I was looking for you. You can't find me. But he can find you. Hmm? The Bible says he's an ever-present help. He probably wants to just tell you how much he loves you. And how much he wants you, wants you to enjoy what all that love affords you. 
because it's not just, you know, a warm fuzzy. His love means life. Abundant life. Peaceful life. Hmm? A straight life. No chaos. Answers coming one right after the other. That's what his life looks like. No matter what happens, fear has no hold on you. No fear whatsoever. We're the children of God. We're fearless. We're not moved by what moves people who don't know him like we know him. We're moved by his word. And if we don't have a spirit of fear, then we don't have a spirit of fear. We have no concerns whatsoever. You're not going to have to have a 401k to have more than enough down the road. I'll tell you, the only thing you really need, can somebody tell me what Mark 11, 22 says? All you need is faith in God. Now, there'll be religious people say, well, you know, but you have to be wise. Well, the wise man would tell us to have faith in God. He wouldn't ask you who your... uh, who your helper was with your, with your finances. Who, who are you invested with? I'm invested with God. Hallelujah. Well, don't you, don't you think you ought to have stuff saved up for a rainy day? Well, if you do that, you may get ready for the next storm because it probably just won't be a rainy day. Because if you're shooting that kind of verbiage out in the airwaves... There's another group of demonios that can't wait to help you out with your rainy day because that's what they came to steal, the blue skies, (laughs) the blue skies. Now, we we don't have anything to be concerned about if we're right with him. Say, I really want to be right with him. But after what I've heard today, that looks like I've got a long way to go. But the truth is, I don't. I just need to get on the path, stay on the path, and continue to download what the Word of God tells me to do. And I'll be right after right after right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me read this verse to you real quick, a couple of verses, and then I want to receive, uh, uh, receive our uh, tithes and offerings. This is from Psalms 92, 12 through 14. Now, some of you will realize why I like this series of verses when I get to it. The righteous say, that's me. If you're a born-again believer, Huh? If you're a brand new creation, then you are righteous. Now, you may not be acting righteous, but you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I expect you to act right because that's what we've just talked about. Huh? You need to be right. You've been made righteous spiritually. You're connected with him. Now, we begin to work that into our life. Amen? Amen out of our heart, and into our life. The righteous shall flourish or break forth like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Never been there, but I'm sure it's amazing. Those that be planted, planted, not just laying on the surface, planted, settled and established in the house of the Lord, shall flourish or break forth in the courts of our God. What a sweet deal that is. It is so important to be planted in the house of the Lord. 
It is so important to have a place of worship that you call home. It's very biblical for you to have pastors that will watch over your soul. That will not be the least bit intimidated to tell you what's right and what's wrong. To let you know that crazy stuff is crazy stuff. You know, to let you know that crazy living is crazy living. To let you know how things are supposed to look between men and women. Huh? You need somebody that will read your mail even though they haven't looked at your mail. Which is easy to do because the Word of God is designed to clean us all up. To put us in a position, because I can say things in here. And as long as you look straight ahead and kind of keep a smile on your face, nobody will know that you're the one that's suffering right now because of what's going on in your life. But you're going to continue to suffer if you don't do things God's way. And so when you hear what needs to be done, then you're automatically going to do that. And what's going to happen? Your life's going to get better. All of a sudden, you'll be right instead of wrong. Glory to God. So you need to be planted in the house. I encourage you to do that. Become a partner here if you're not a partner. huh? Say, well, you know, does that mean I've got to give? You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do what we believe you ought to do. I mean, it's got us where we are. I mean, the Bible says to follow those who through faith and patience are inheriting the promises. Listen, we didn't have anything to do with our success, except we wouldn't let go of the Word of God. We just wouldn't let go of the Word of God. I don't know of anybody. I've never met anybody that had a, had a perfect marriage. Peek in, I've had a, had a great marriage. But, you know, we had, we had stuff we had to deal with. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You can imagine, here I am, a wonderful guy. And then, you know, the stuff I had to deal with with her. <laughs> I'm joking. So nobody's, nobody's had a perfect union. I mean, that I've heard of. I've, we haven't gotten that testimony or that praise report. You know, I haven't gotten that, <laughs> haven't gotten that praise report yet. Because then I'd have to question if you were a liar or not. <laughs> so if you get planted in the house of the Lord, that's why we, that's why we believe it's a, a big deal when... Uh, when you partner with us. It's a big deal to us, and it can be a big deal to you also. But nothing, nothing is going to be any bigger to you than your commitment to him. And he's the, one, he's the one that said he was going to build his church, so this is not some random stinking idea some man had, you know. And then verse 14, they shall, bring, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Yes. Hallelujah. I can still bring forth fruit. I mean, you're 78 old. Whatever. You're just, I already feel amazing. So you're not going to, you're going to, you're not going to make me feel better, but oh no, it's not. And you're thinking. <laughs> they shall be, it says fat, but that's, that's, I mean, that's not me, but fat is just kind of, uh, what would it be? What's, what, what, what are we looking at there? It's, it has to do with your substance and what you have and just, uh, you know, kind of, you know, like a good piece of ham, you know, you got some. <laughs> Doug, you probably know, but you know, I don't, I don't, you don't have a mic right now what that is, but it's a. It's just uh, like uh, well-healed or, and I'm not talking about healed in the healed sense. I'm just talking about it's good. I mean, you know, your cup's running over. Everything's good. So uh, let me read this first part again. I like it the most. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat or vigorous and prosperous and flourishing, very productive. So the more of those things I personally see, the more it makes sense to me that I get with the program. That I not allow myself 
you know, to go over to the sidelines and sit down. Because I'm not done. We're not done. And the only thing that will keep us going is this white, hot fervor that comes from our connection with him. Amen. Amen. And then let me just tell you how wonderful it is to have the group of people that we do have. Those of you that have been a part of Choose Life for many, many years, and some of you, it seems like it's been many, many years, but maybe it hadn't been that many. But what a blessing it is to serve God with you. And to let you know, if you don't know, how big a deal it is for you to honor God with this. Because we got something going for us. Got great people, great opportunities. And we want to be ready for whatever God asks us to do. Part of that takes resources. But part of it also takes people. And their excitement and their enthusiasm about the things of God. There's nothing hard about serving God. Nothing at all hard about serving God. Again, it's not some life, it's the life. And when we're connected with Him, He'll make it clear to us. Amen? Amen. If you're given by uh, cash or check, there's an uh, uh, envelope uh, in the seat back in front of you. If you're given electronically, you can go to the, the Choose Life app, lower right-hand corner, click on giving. You could do it that way. You can text to give, text 84321, put your amount and, and text to 84321. If you want to mail it in, we assume that the USPS is still uh, working well. Just send it to Choose Life, Choose Life Church. P.O. Box 22, Hobbs, New Mexico, 88241. And that will work also. Hallelujah. Say, I believe God is. I believe God is. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What a promise. What a stinking promise. Huh? Don't be slow. Take a hold of that and go. Father, in Jesus' name, as we give, we thank you that you receive the gifts of the people, whether it's a tithe, an offering, as a worship unto yourself. Thank you. On every seed is the ability to reproduce. Thank you, Father, that as we continue to grow and sow, we'll be able to go into everything you ask us to do as individuals, as families, and as a body of believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that uh, you're worth doing your best? You believe you're worth doing your best? Because you are. Jesus proved that you are. You're worth doing your best. Amen. Bow your heads for just a moment. Let me just ask you before we're, before we're dismissed. If you've never personally received the Lord Jesus, or you're not sure of that relationship,
Or maybe you're sure of it, but you just haven't. You just haven't been doing what you know you need to do. You just know that that relationship can be better. Any one of those three, if that's you, I'd be honored to pray with you today. Just to kind of seal the deal for you. Just to, just to help you realize that there is no relationship more important than your relationship with Him. Obviously, first and foremost, because it brings eternal life. But also, it provides an opportunity for you to have an abundant life, a fruitful life, a fulfilled life. If that's you, if there's any of you that that can answer that call. You've either never personally received him or like the other two. You're not sure or you just know that that relationship needs to be made clear. Is there anyone at all? Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I just want to have a kind of a mini MINI counseling session with you. See if you can reach us down there. You know, when uh, when you're hard on yourself, it makes things difficult to hear and to do what you know to do. You have to stop seeing yourself the way you've been seeing yourself and start seeing yourself the way he sees you. Give him an opportunity to make it clear to you how valuable you are to him. And that his plan for you will never fail if you'll simply let him lead you and guide you. You can do this. We're going to pray this together. Those of you online that have never received the Lord Jesus or want to pray this, I want you to pray this with us also. The two of you to pray this. Just say exactly what I tell you to say. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. Just hold up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to receive your Son and all he has to offer. Thank you, Jesus for paying the price for me so that I can have eternal life. I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Father. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, you also forgive me and receive me. From this day forward, I'm going to see things differently. I'm going to know you in a more intimate way so I can enjoy the freedom that's been paid for. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 
love you, sweetheart. Go with this young lady. You gotta hear from there. If you, would you just go with her for just a minute? I've got a gift for you. Can you do that? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, tonight there'll be a bunch of energy in here. You know, kind of like when I asked you guys a question. I'm joking. I've learned to love your responses. They kind of give me a time to rest in between whatever else we're doing, you know. I love you and I'm excited. Be sure and come bring some people. Pack the place out. If it gets too hot, we'll turn the air on. We want you to be comfortable. So we're going to have a great time. But it won't be the same without you. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for this wonderful group of men, young men and women, men and women, and boys and girls, thank you that each of us receive today exactly what we need to move forward with. We will be right. We will do right. We will continue to learn and honor you in all our ways. We love you, Father. Thank you that everyone passes safely to their homes. Back tonight to enjoy this great group in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you a bunch. I'll see you tonight. If I don't see you tonight, we'll be taking pictures, and I'll have somebody call you.